Okay, thank you so much everyone for coming along tonight. It's great to see you here. Uh, this evening, I would like to uh, introduce or talk about uh, the Drupal Distributions Initiative. Um, for those of you who uh, uh, saw the, the Dries note, and I know probably one or two of you here actually saw it in person, but for those of you who've watched on video, you probably would have seen uh, or, or recognized Dries talk about a few sort of key concepts for what's coming up in Drupal. And uh, a few of the ones I've picked out here are the fact that uh, in the future, Drupal is going to be looking at being having a smaller core, removing unused modules or lesser used modules in, in Drupal core. Um, the, the concept of a uh, the site builder persona is something that is receiving uh, extra attention these days. So in, in past Dries notes, you may have May remember Dries talking about things like you know developer experience and editor experience and marketers and and UX. It, it seems like the uh, the pendulum is swinging back to to the site builder experience and, and not just ordinary site builders. These are ambitious uh, site builders. And one of the other things Dries mentioned was uh, starter templates, and that's really what uh, we'll be uh, talking about today. So if if we have a look at um, just bring the starter templates and the ambitious site builders together. You can see like with a traditional distribution, it's typically being very developer focused. Um, the idea is that the ambitious uh, site builders will be the ones who will be able to uh, maintain these new um, starter templates as well as install them and uh, make use of them. And of course, one of the, the other overriding uh, concepts there is to, to make the effort small, to make starter templates much easier to use uh, than uh, distributions as we know them today. Uh, if you take a look at the, the what the concept is, it's basically to improve the installment uh, install procedure. You know, when you're spinning up a Drupal site, what do you see? You know, you see basically a blank screen with empty an empty site with uh, no content in it. Uh, so the idea is that when you're actually installing the site, you you get to choose things. Uh, so, you know, such as your location, uh, your language, and why not augment that by um, selecting or possibly selecting a template. So instead of just using minimal or standard, you get to pick a, a template like this. And of course, we can see here that the general concept is to have different templates for, for different industries or, or verticals. Uh, so that's basically the idea uh, that Dries has, um, has uh, promoted there. Uh, during the presentation, there's going to be a, a few recurring themes. Um, I've just mentioned the installation experience there, but we also have the concept of Drupal existing in a world where it needs to compete with other CMSs, where they do offer that full that full package, that full experience. Um, we also have the concept of the business model. Um, it does take effort to build a, a distro or a, a starter template. What are the potential rewards there for companies that do um, you know, put that effort in to actually build that? Is it just a tool for the community to use or is there a business model behind it? Another concept is we ask these starter templates starting points where you just install it, you get what you get, you build it as you like, or are they upgradable? You know, do you expect new features to stream through to your, your website or um, you know, do you expect to get updates to, to content types and things like that? And finally, we have the technical foundations. That's a lot of what sort of is being discussed, um, you know, at the moment in, in the Drupal community. How can we make all these, um, these starter templates a reality? But bef before we get into what's happening in 2022, um, I'd just like to go through some history. Uh, this is sort of some, you know, it's just some fun stuff to look back to, to see where we've come from. And the, the concept of Drupal distributions has been around for an awful long uh, time. You know, that's going back 15, 16 years. You know, Dries first started talking about this stuff, um, you know, back in Drupal 5, Drupal 6 with installation profiles. And you can see Dries, Dries has really touched on all of the points um, that are still very much relevant um, today. And, you know, Dries is talking about you know, competing in, in markets and opening up new ones, um, you know, having a collaborative you know, uh, community effort behind it. I think you recognize the hard work that, that was there and also the need to build a business model around that. And 
Um, back in 2006, that was, you know, the idea was that uh, Drupal agencies would build services around the, the distros, uh, you know, that they made. So yeah, Dries called it an awesome adventure. And, and here we are, um, you know, 15, 16 years later, uh, still talking about it. Um, a few years after that, um, and this is roughly when I was getting involved with the Drupal community, there was a whole lot of conversation around small core and uh, a number of you may, you know, sort of remember that, that conversation. Um, there was a Drupal company called uh, Development um, Seed and they, um, they were big proponents of it. And um, basically, you know, the concept of small core is, is one that is relevant to this conversation because it's, it's all about, um, you know, building a solid foundation for Drupal, having Drupal made of, you know, reusable uh, components and, and just focusing on those generalized things that each site, uh, each site will, would need. Um, you know, Dries in response to this said he didn't necessarily like the term of small core, but, um, you know, when it all boiled down to it, Dries was really sort of favoring um, the product nature of Drupal. So he was saying he wants to promote a strong Drupal product. And I, I think from 2009, we've really seen, uh, you know, Drupal improve with all of these other personas I was talking about, such as, um, you know, editor experience, um, you know, marketers, and uh, trying to, you know, improve things such as, you know, media experience and editor experience, all of these kinds of things. So that's really where sort of, you know, uh, Drupal progress to sort of like a move away from that that smaller core. Um, uh, Larry Garfield uh, had had a few words to stay on what small core was, and he had a slightly different angle on it. it. It wasn't really about the size of the code, but it was about the architecture of the code. And so he was saying, asking, is Drupal going to be an additive system or a subtractive one? And the, the development seed guys were, were complaining about it you having to subtract stuff from Drupal. And Larry was saying, well, okay, let's let's make it a more building blocks thing. And of course we've had Symphony um, in, in Drupal 8 from then on. I, I think the word additive there is very interesting because in his keynote, Dries was talking about composable and it just seems that that language is, yeah, it's coming full uh, circle, um, you know, 11 or 12 years later. Okay. Um, Dries was also picking up this idea of um, business models as well, all the way back in, in 2010, basically asking how can we make it uh, commercially interesting? I, th I think from th that side of things, um, you know, Dries and Acqui were probably, you know, trying to work out how they could, um, you know, build distributions in a, in a profitable way. And even in 2017, Dries was still pondering um, these, these questions. Um, and, you know, the, the solution there down the bottom was to be able to offer um, the Drupal hosting at scale. Um, and it's similar to what, uh, you know, Michael was, has just been talking about, you know, the idea of, you know, PaaS and SaaS services that are able to, to spin up these, um, these distros at scale does, uh, does provide, you know, a viable um, sort of business model there. Uh, another Another uh, very interesting you know, presentation was one that happened at Drupal South. Uh, Lee Rollins in uh, 2016 really sort of picked up this idea of, um, of the concept of the uh, starter profile, as he called it. And, um, you know, basically was really pushing the idea of having install profiles to receive a first class treatment and for, to actually have a vetted by a pro, uh, like a product manager at Drupal to vet what these install profiles could look like. And so Lee is really picking up on the concept of a foundation for Drupal and then, you know, the profile being the product. And so Lee was really pushing hard this idea of Drupal's got to improve. We've got to get better. We've got to sort of deliver these end experiences if we're going to um, succeed. And I think the very important takeaway there at the end is that, you know, Lee says a profile is just exported site building. That was his sort of final sentence for the day. And this basically means, you know, an ambitious site builder can, you know, deliver a starter template because all you have to do is build a site, capture it in configuration, and that's it. You know, you've managed to, um, to, to do a starter template. And that's exactly what Dries is now talking about with ambitious site builders. It's really about sort of democratizing the way um, uh, starter templates can be built by, 
by uh, by site builders. Um, yeah, so Lee's been really promoting this, and uh, that's a, a quite an, an interesting thread there. Uh, you know, if you want to sort of read up on on some of the the uh, the sort of ideas, you know, behind what's been happening uh, recently. So yeah, anyway, so Dries, he's got his he's got his plan. He's had the Dries note. We've got starter templates. It's the the latest and greatest. Um, um, in a recent article, Dries has laid out a um, roadmap for the next two years. So this is not Drupal 10, it's Drupal 11. And uh, you can see the main the main sort of things that we'll be looking at over the next two years to to get to where we want to go. And if, like the project browser is, is a big deal, you know, it allows people to, to browse modules that is going to sort of hook into this starter template um, idea. And that's going to be, you know, supported by a uh, smaller core uh, as well. So you can really see all of these ideas, you know, that were sort of discussed all the way back in, in 2009, um, just, yeah, coming to the fore now. So it's amazing how these, uh, these mega cycles uh, take place. It's worth just having a, a bit of a quick look at some of the, the successes and failures in the um, in the uh, in the space. Um, we're probably many of you are familiar with the commerce um, distro by the commerce guys. It came out, you know, with Drupal seven. It had such a familiar screen. If you know, if you ever built one of these Drupal commerce sites, Drupal commerce was very opinionated. It had an opinionated design, functionality, and structure. And it was amazing if you wanted a site that did that exact thing. Um, however, if you wanted to change it, adapt it, or do something different, it was not so good. Also, if you wanted to update it, it was not really possible. So we've, you know, we kind of got amazing success, but we also have problems around sort of upgrading and uh, customizing things. Um, Lightning is another one I'd like to call out um, for different reasons. It was based around a, a lower level sort of editor experience. Um, so it's not so in, much interested in a specific um, uh, sort of use case. It was more the general use case of, of supporting editors. Um, unfortunately for Lightning, you know, it, it, well, I do have to say, I think it was successful, but unfortunately for Lightning, it had massive problems with, you know, upgrading through the versions of Drupal, um, you know, handling changes in the way layouts were done, layout builder arrived and just the upgrade experience would have been horrendous for the developers I would say of lightning but also equally frustrating for um, you know people using it so this is a case where they were supporting an upgrade path not just a, a starting point and I think if if that upgrade path wasn't supported life may well have been you know easier um, all around so I, I think when you know he grits his teeth about the expense of maintaining distros. Yeah, he, he may be uh, thinking about lightning there. Okay, so let's move on to the, the distributions initiative. That's what we've, where we're at today. And this is an active area in the, the Drupal community at the moment. Uh, it's not a, a formal uh, initiative, um, but it certainly seems to be uh, shaping up to be one. Uh, Alex Pott is uh, sort of organizing uh, a lot of it, and there's uh, a link there for you to see, you know, what the roadmap um, is and, and what, pot, what what work is being done in the area. Um, firstly, you know, the roadmap identifies all of these difficulties, right, with the distros that, that currently exist, and these are all the things that we've been, um, you know, talking about. One of, one of the big ones is that the fact that a, if a distro is in a profile, it's very difficult to change, right? It's baked into the uh, baked into the um, the whole system. And in fact, like Dave Hall has an article that's about ten years old for Drupal Seven on how to change the the profile. And I found myself looking at that article just the other other day and and scratching my head on how how difficult uh, it is. And uh, you know, basically, because it's so hard, it's very difficult to mix and match different distros, you're not going to install one and then install another and, and have it work with it. So um, that is that is a major um, problem. Um, the roadmap has all of these potential resolutions and these are the areas that are, are being um, worked on. And, you know, basically I won't go through all of those, but um, it's essentially addressing uh, how, how we can solve these problems. I think the, the main thing 
to pick up on is it's really all about modules and config. And that's really going back to Dries's original uh, 2006 post. He just talks about modules and config. And you know it's very easy for ambitious site builders. Uh, in 2022, we have Composer. Um, back then, they had Drush Make. But it seems that the solution that will be arrived at will be based around those um, three things for uh, distributing and, and maintaining these um, starter templates. And um, we also have content or default content there. At the moment, that's a little bit less clear. How do we ship uh, default content with distros? Um, from my read of it, it doesn't seem like default content will be going into core, but it is certainly something that people are talking about as to how, how we can manage that with uh, with the distributions or the starter templates. Okay, so yeah, just wrapping up the, the conversation and work continues. If you want to follow along with this, you can go to um, Drupal Slack. Uh, there's quite an active channel there. They're meeting uh, each week and, and discussing uh, these things. And, you know, it's going to be interesting uh, to see how that all unfolds. So thanks a lot, everyone. That's That's pretty much it. Uh, a quick intro to the uh, distributions initiative. Thank you.